Our sermon text for today is the gospel lesson for the fifth Sunday after Easter. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text teaches us to pray. Prayer is one of God's greatest gifts to us and one of the greatest works of faith. So that he who prays in faith has God's favor and all his blessings. There are four reasons why we pray. First, because God commands us to pray. Second, because we need his help. Third, because it is a necessary fruit of faith. Fourth, because God blesses prayer with very great promises. We pray because the Christ commanded us to pray. In verse 24 of our text, he says, Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. This is worded as a command. Pray. You do not get to decide whether or not you want to pray. You must pray, and if you are a Christian, you will pray. For a Christian, to pray is a good and pleasant command. Just because it is a law to pray does not mean the law is harsh. There is often a confusion about the law that falsely thinks the law is always unpleasant and harsh. But in fact, the law of God is good and pleasant to those who are faithful. For St. Paul writes in Romans 7, verse 12, The law is holy, and the commandment is holy and just and good. Even in the Ten Commandments, we find the perfect example of a commandment which is meant to bless and not to curse. The fourth commandment, honor thy father and thy mother, is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. In the same way, to pray is a command, but that does not make it unpleasant or harsh. Although our sinful flesh, which does not want to pray, makes the command difficult because our flesh is unfaithful. Nonetheless, the command is intended for our benefit. It is as if God were to command us to eat. Would eating become unpleasant because he commanded it? Of course not. On the contrary, it would confirm that our God cares for us and wants us to be fed and healthy. How much more, then, should we obey the command to pray, which is for the health and well-being of the soul? We pray because our need is very great. In the words of the small catechism, we are not worthy of anything for which we pray and have not merited it, but we pray that he would grant us all things through grace, although we daily commit much sin and deserve chastisement. The command is both good and beneficial. There is no rational reason not to pray, since the promises God attaches to it are so great. But our sinful flesh is just that wicked, that it rejects the law of God purely for the sake of disobedience. Therefore, we must constantly pray to God to forgive us for failing to pray along with all other sins we have committed against him. Beyond this, 
we require the grace of God for every need, both of body and soul. If he did not provide all these things out of his own goodness, we would not live a single day. Therefore, we also owe him thanks for forgiveness and all his blessings. We pray because it is a natural expression and exercise of faith. I am nervous to say this. But I will explain myself. The Christian faith is a relationship with God. I said it, but I do not mean it as the loose heterodox churches mean it. When they say that that Christianity is a relationship, they mean, in their own words, that it is not a religion. And when they say it is not a religion... This is usually a fuzzy way of saying that the law does not matter. Against this false opinion, St. James, in today's epistle lesson, calls the Christian faith pure and undefiled religion. These are the words of St. James, confirming that Christianity is not just a religion, but it is the only true religion. So when I say that the Christian faith is a relationship with God, I only mean what the Christ says in our gospel text. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. We know exactly what kind of relationship we have with the Father. That of adopted children through faith in his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. It is natural for children to talk to their Father and to ask for things they need. Likewise, through faith, we are reconciled to God the Father, and it is natural for faith to speak with him through prayer, to call on him in need, and thank him for his blessings. It is also natural, in turn, for fathers to hear the requests of their children, and to grant them what is good. As the Christ teaches, In Luke chapter 11, where he says, If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So on account of faith, we and God stand in a father-to-child relationship where we naturally pray and he naturally responds. Prayer is called an exercise of faith because it is one of the first ways faith is put into practice. To the outside world, prayer must look foolish. They see a man go into a private room and speak into that empty room about all his problems, which he hopes some invisible God will fix, instead of going out and fixing it himself. This is just a caricature, but the point is, prayer looks absolutely stupid, unless you are convinced by the Holy Spirit that God exists, hears your prayers, and answers them. In this way, true prayer sets Christians apart from all other men on earth because it is a pure expression of faith. And the remarkable thing is that the greater the temptation, the more faith prays, contrary to all human reason.
We pray, finally, because God blesses prayer with great promises. The Christ says in today's Gospel, Most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Again he says, You will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you. So God promises to hear our prayers, to answer, and to give whatever we ask in Christ's name. He will do this because he promises to love us for the sake of the Christ. But what does it mean to pray in Christ's name? It means to pray in faith, and as the Christ has taught us. For the Father does not promise to give us whatever we ask, but to give us whatever we ask in Christ's name. How, then, has the Christ taught us to pray? This is best summarized in the Lord's Prayer where we pray that God's name be hallowed, his kingdom come, and his will be done among us. This means that his word would be rightly taught among us, that his Holy Spirit would be effective through it in us, that we would rightly use his sacraments, and that the wicked desires of God's enemies would come to nothing. We also pray that God would forgive us our sins for Christ's sake, since we daily sin much, and that he would help us to forgive others, including our enemies. These things are all spiritual in nature and pertain to the kingdom of heaven, where our true desires should be directed. And such things are absolutely guaranteed to those who believe. But he also teaches us to pray for daily bread. That is everything we need for earthly life. He does not teach us to pray for food, specifically, or clothing, specifically, but for daily bread in general. God knows what we need, and when we need it, better than we do. So we leave it to him to decide what daily bread means for us on a daily basis. We may still pray for specific things. God wants us to ask him for all desires. Since we lack the wisdom of God, he wants us to ask him with humility trusting that he truly hears us, truly wants what is good for us, and will give us what we ask, if it is good. Psalm 84, 11 declares, No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And James 1, verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. All these things God promises to give us when we pray in the name of the Christ. He promises forgiveness, his kingdom, and his goodwill. And even though he does not promise specific earthly goods, he does promise that he will give us all good things according to his perfect wisdom. Therefore, since everything we need and desire comes from God, both for this life and especially for the life to come, we should want to pray, even without the commandment, and would if our sinful flesh did not get in the way. Because of this sinful flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ encourages and urges us to pray through both the command and the promises. 
Prayer is good, especially when our prayers are guided by the words which God himself has taught us to pray. When we pray according to the words of Scripture, and especially the Lord's Prayer, this is one way in which we inwardly digest God's Word, to use the phrase from our liturgy. By praying what Scripture says, we learn to apply it to ourselves and to hold God to his promises. So there are four reasons why we pray. God commands it, and every command of God is good and must be obeyed. We need his grace daily, and prayer is how we ask for it. It is a natural fruit of faith, so that if we believe, we will pray. And we pray because God encourages us with profound promises. Thus, prayer is one of the greatest gifts of God and one of the greatest works of faith. He who prays faithfully has God's favor. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.